All right, here we go. Hi, Steve. No idea how I found your channel, but after watching hours of your videos long ago, events came flooding back to me. Thought I'd never had a Sasquatch encounter, but now that's not true. My story may add a few unusual data points to consider, and personally, I started connecting dots I didn't realize existed. I used to live on a remote property in the mountains of southwest Oregon in a small cabin. The property was surrounded by federal land, and the road up to the mountain was one lane dirt track. During heavy snows, four-wheel drive was usually the best for getting home. One day, my husband told me he heard screaming in the forest. It bothered him. Eventually, I ended up spending many nights alone doing meditations and energy work. I literally changed the atmosphere of the cabin. Visitors commented on it, and I experienced many energy-related events, including communication with the wild animals that lived on and around the property. Deer, coyote, and black bear, mostly. Something was activated in me. You'd think I was crazy on drugs if I told you the things that happened. Dogs and cats started arriving, even horses, some lost, starving, needing shelter or medical care. They got all that and lots of love. No idea how they found their way to me. I walked the property, meditated in the forest, ran off hunters, sorry, but it was my home, and unwittingly created a sanctuary. No animal ever threatened me. All were protected and sheltered. I never heard the screams. We lived in peace. I eventually moved 25 miles away, adopted two dogs, and began taking them for walks at a rural wooded riverside park. You could set a clock by my routine. The park board is a wildlife reserve, empty fields, scattered industrial complexes, homes, and small ranches stretching out over the foothills. There are small ponds, sloughs, and swampy areas around too. During World War II, the area was an army base, encompassing 50,000 acres decommissioned when the war ended. There are old bunkers hidden away, very close to the park, and unexplored ordnance an unexploded ordnance has been found in the fields around it. Currently, there's a military air base 60 miles away and a small commercial airport within 5 miles, with enough runway for the military planes to land and fighter jets to do touch and goes. I arrived at the park before sunrise to experience the energy when no one was around. It's a magical time. First thing, I touched on a tree and said a prayer of gratitude, asking the tree to share my happiness, love, and serenity with all living things. As I walk, I say another prayer of gratitude and respect for the earth. One morning in the park, I asked for and receiving, received healing from crippling, painful nerve, nerve damage to my hip. I've been in extreme pain and limping for months. Relief was instantaneous. Like I said, it's magical. I can identify many sounds in the river, but it wasn't until the email describing water displacement that I realized Sasquatch is making his presence known again with the loud plop of a large rock hitting the water behind me. Turning around, there's nothing on the river or in the air to make that noise. It's not waterfowl driving. It's not waterfowl diving or dropping fish, landing or taking off. A beaver tail slapping the surface, surface, river otters or deer waiting in the brush covered bar in that river. Something is throwing the rocks into the river as I walk past. But again, nothing threatens or attempts to frighten me. It's simply telling me that it's there. Then one morning, something very unusual happened. Actually, everything probably sounds unusual, but that's my normal. It was at least 30 minutes to sunrise and still dark out. I was pulled into the park. A strong energy pulsated against me, flowing around me. I slowed down and started to look around, head on a swivel. As I drove further into the park, the energy grew in intensity. It wasn't until I got to the very back lot, a half mile from the entrance, that I saw it. A doorway. It stood next to the path by the river, rectangular in shape, just like an open door, about eight feet or more high and five feet wide. It was backlit with a soft white light, making it stand out from the darkness around it. The energy was hazy, wavy, within the doorway. Through the gauzy waves, I could see the bank sloping down to the river, the river flowing past, and the bushes on the opposite bank. I stood next to the car, just watching. There were no birds, squirrels, waterfowl, deer, owls, wild turkeys, and no wind. None of the sounds that normally greet me. The energy continued to pulse. Nothing came through the doorway from the opposite side or entered from my side. I watched for two minutes, never taking my eyes off it, before it disappeared. There was no trace that it ever existed. I've mentioned this to people in different backgrounds, medical, inventors, slash scientists, energy healers, etc. I've been told it's a portal to a spiritual realm, man-made, directed, scholar, energy, and my personal favorite, neurological brain damage, I must be crazy. I've stopped, talk, I've stopped talking to people about my energy work and experiences. Knowing Sasquatch is within rock throwing distance, if you saw a doorway in the woods you would connect the two? What would you think if you were new to that scholar energy could be created and directed and used for good or weaponized? 
What would you think if you knew that the military conducts top secret experiments involving portal energy and has resources nearby? Would you question why a doorway appeared in the dark at a time and place when no one but you regularly shows up? Would you think it was connected? That it was an experiment or a test? Do people step through the doorways and disappear? Or do coincidences exist and it all means nothing? For me, it just gets weirder. My father-in-law was a commander of the base the park is adjacent to. He also worked at the Pentagon. Years later, he owned the mountain property during the time I lived there and energetically created a sanctuary. Is this just a series of really strange coincidences, or are our lives strongly interconnected somehow? Does it have anything to do with energy work and nonverbal communication with other life forms? If Sasquatch can manipulate energy, disappear from plain sight, possibly use portals, definitely use telepathic communication that's been around for many years, is this proof we share energy? What can we learn from this? I'm very sensitive to energy and physically feel it pressing against me or passing through my body. The energy could be from a natural or man-made sources. It could be a latent ability, a part of us we've forgotten that is slowly activating again. It could be how we learn to reshape our world. Something is happening. What it is and how it is all fits together. What it is and how it all fits together, I just don't know yet. Thank you for your courage and dogged determination to get information out to people. I started watching your videos out of curiosity until they opened a line of inquiry I never expected. The more I go down the rabbit hole, the deeper it gets, Deb. Amen to that one. The more you go down the rabbit hole, the deeper it gets, and the more turns come up right in front of your face, right? This lifetime's an amazing time. Like I said numerous times, sometimes I wonder what it'd be like to be numb to all of it, what's happening. Still here, sun's going down. What is it? I don't know what day it is. Saturday or something, maybe? <laughs> I don't normally stay on top of the days. I don't have a normal schedule like most people. Let's see what we got here to share before it gets too dark. All right. I wrote to you before, sir. My confirmation of these beings was very traumatic. And I felt like an idiot after you gave me su such a slap in the face that I needed. Meaning when I wrote to you, I was still effing out of it after I saw the large thing. I think they scrambled in my brain. Ha <laughs> ha. I just wanted you and all your club and no return to understand that you have changed my life as much as the encounters I've had with these things literally in my backyard. My boots are back on the ground, ready for anything again. I don't bother them, they don't bother me. I'm not making this a long one. I'm not making this a long one. Please share, Steve. The club needs to know you're helping more than they know. Thank you again for doing what you do. Thanks for the club no return. God bless you, brother. Signed, Timothy, Northeast Ohio. Timothy, that's good news. I'm absolutely ecstatic <laughs> that that helped you out. And, uh, you know, to a lot of you people who aren't familiar with this topic, or you're just you're you're curious of the topic and you haven't had a first-hand experience. It might be hard for you to understand what exactly this does to your average person, and uh, what it does to the average person to be ridiculed and terrified of sharing openly what they didn't ask to experience. Um, I I'm not trying to pat myself on the back at all. I think if anybody deserves a pat on the back, it's the people who who created the courage for themselves to come forward and share what they did and ask to experience. That's who needs a pat on the back. Every single one of you. But uh, again, for all you people that don't understand it, um, it's just not a good thing. It's not a good thing to have these experiences and to keep them pent up with nowhere to go. Okay? And it's just definitely, this is making a difference for many people out there. And that's why, obviously, why I'm, I'm still doing it. So, I'm very glad you took your time to share that email, my man. And good news that you are still eagerly going out. Okay, what else have we got? My grandchildren. Oh, I read that one. What have we got here? A bunch of pictures. Oh, i got to open it up. PDF. Steve, attached to my six-page story, story so far. The log for the, gyps, the Jeep's windshield is explained 
as well as many other encounters, including having a red dot sight on a pair of eyes with an eight inch spread, hearing them yowl, swim, scare the hell out of my dog and create general mayhem. The only thing I ask is you choose to air it is call me Woody and keep the exact location ambiguous. I'm pretty sure I did this well. What I've learned about what I've learned about the they are an enigma and completely unpredictable. But they certainly know what guns are and they definitely know who not to reveal themselves to. The fellow that I hunt with in North Carolina thinks they do not exist. I think they choose to avoid him like a plague because he is an excellent bear and deer hunter who would not think twice about dumping one. I also sure harvest many of the hundred plus bears he has guided people to and has taken himself for the last 30 years. I really hope they maintain this behavior. I also did my best at punctuation and tried not to ramble. I think I did well at the punctuation and not so well at the later. Sincerely, Woody. <laughs> North Carolina. Thanks, Woody. Um, wow, these pictures are something else, aren't they? And I'm going to have to... Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's going to crack open that email. Maybe. Might have enough reception right here. Or maybe not. All right. I'm going to have to add that in. Your email in later on, all right? Because I guess it's making me want to sign in. And I don't have enough juice here. So I'll possibly read your email. And just throw up some content in the background to go with it, all right? I'll thank in advance for sending that in. Hello, Steve. My name is David Hayes. And I'm a 50-year-old four-year-old husband, father, and grandfather. I also served in the Navy, straight out of high school for a few years. I had two strokes in the last two years. All right, read that one. I don't know why I didn't. Hi, Steve. I've been lurking your channel for some time now. As you listen to YouTube on my way to and from work and stumbled upon yours one day and kept listening because I enjoy the outdoors. I've never seen one yet, but I grew up in the forest in central Wisconsin. As a kid was... As a kid, I was out in the hills alone a lot and enjoyed the whole experience. I'm 32 now. I still live in Wisconsin and still go out to the woods as often as I can. I teach high school shop class, driver's ed, and I'm a custom bladesmith. Rare things, I'm told. Basically, I babysit teenagers with industrial tools. <laughs> I'm sure that could be fun, especially when they start pranking. <laughs> I've seen a lot of your videos mentioning the sixth sense humans had, slash have, slash lost, etc. Until I heard you mention on your channel, I thought I was the only one, or one of a few, who feel that. I spent a lot of time alone, so when in the woods, I try to hike by feeling the surroundings versus looking around. I've hiked the same forest for years, and some days when I arrive, I go in 500 feet, turn around, and leave, because I felt the don't come in here today feeling. Bravo. Good, good work. I've always just said thanks for the warning and left. One example of it was in college. Myself and four friends were out for a late night woodland hike and chat 1 a.m. or something. We stopped in an old rock pit and stood in a diamond position so we could all see each other's backs. I've had a few close calls with cougar, animal, not the middle-aged female, to leave anyone's back exposed in the forest at night. We were chatting and at the same time one of my friends and I both stopped, locked eyes and said, you notice that too? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I agree. The other three were confused, and we told them we will explain later, but we have to leave right now. We left, and as soon as we broke tree cover, we heard what sounded like a bobcat, and then smelled a skunk go off. Both he and I felt the same thing at the same time. I've always been able to feel these things when I focus for it. I can even focus on a close friend or someone I know well, and feel if they're in the house or not by walking or driving by. It feels like a glow in my mind, where I see them like a projector screen with those transparency sheets. No glow, they aren't there. Anyway, as a kid, I always used to talk to the forest and imagine I would get replies. Hearing your stories from others, it makes me wonder if I was actually not imagining the replies. Either way, I've always felt protected in the woods in a sense. Always enter thinking, just here for a walk, how are you today? And then leave thinking, thanks for keeping an eye on me and stay safe. I don't know if that makes me insane or not, but every single time there's been danger, there's been something warning me way beforehand. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me went out in the forest alone. Everything went silent and I heard drumming, chanting, and what sounded like stomping. Think Native American dancing around a fire. It lasted for a few seconds and the forest sounds came back. This was particularly weird because I was off the trail in the middle of absolute nowhere. No reason for anyone to be playing Native American music or doing reenactments. It was rather odd, but otherwise not something unnerving. Just a, huh? That was weird moment. It was rather odd, but otherwise not something unnerving. Just a, 
Huh? That was weird moment. Anyway, if you read this, it may help others get an idea of what the sixth sense is, at least for me. I spend a lot of time alone because I don't much like people or the noise that comes with people. I have no doubts the Bigfoot Sasquatch are out there somewhere. Some probably watch slash warn me off. I like to think that if they did, they know I don't have any interest in causing them trouble and would leave me be as I would them. Feel free to use my name if you read this on the channel. I don't really care who knows my full name because frankly, I'm an easy Google with the information I provided, so do what you like there. I'll let you know if I ever encounter one. Okay, man, thanks a lot for that email. I will guarantee you there are as many people out there who can relate to your words as um, we have definitely had people email into the same theme numerous times already. It's an interesting ride being alive, you guys, isn't it? It's an interesting ride. What else do we got? Dear Steve, I'm a recent follower of your channel. I enjoy all the stories you share. I also enjoy the beautiful settings you choose as a backdrop in all your videos. I've been an avid hunter all my whole life, 30 plus years now. My dad nurtured my love of the outdoors and encouraged my passion for hunting. He's hunted his whole life, as his dad before him. I now take my son out hunting and the circle has come around fully four generations. I grew up in Massachusetts where I hunted and we hunted annually at my grandpa's in Maine my whole life as well. I've also hunted in Michigan, Missouri, northern Quebec for caribou, Colorado, Texas, Ohio, and just about every New England state. My dad retired and bought a place in northwest Montana. I've been hunting out there for over 15 years, sometimes for the bow season, sometimes for the gun, sometimes both working permitting. Sometimes both work permitting. When I'm out there, we hunt right on my dad's property, which is a 20-acre plot surrounded by acres and acres of woods. The mountains are all around us. We also hunt up there as well. He lives in an old gold mining town with about 200 residents total. There are no paved roads. There are definitely more big game animals than people. As I said, I've spent my whole life hunting and always walk in the dark for a morning hunt and walk out in the dark for the, e for the evening hunt. I've never had a problem with the woods at night. When I was a little girl, my dad used to say, you're carrying a weapon, you're the scariest thing out there, which made me feel more confident and was probably true in North England, but hunting Montana is a little different. You have grizzlies, mountain lions, and wolves. Nonetheless, I never overcome with fear walking in the woods. Nonetheless, I have never overcome with fear walking in the woods in the dark. I actually enjoy it. One particular year, about 10 years ago now, I went to sit by this wallow in a tree stand I'd sat in many times. I shot multiple deer and elk from the stand. Missed a huge cinnamon bear one year from, which was a bummer. But I always see game from the stand, shooter or not. This particular afternoon, it was warm. It was early September. I walked in and got settled. I had my bow and I always carry a 357 revolver on my hip. I wasn't sitting long when someone up the road started playing this god-awful music from about a mile or two away. Sound carries really far out there. I can usually hear a train from 10 miles away, especially on a day like today when it was dead silent with no breeze. This music went on and on and I was like, will it ever end? There were no birds like usual and I laughed and thought they probably flew out of fear. They flew out of earshot. If I could only be so lucky. The music was that bad, and as I said, it went on and on. Hours passed, and as they did, I got a very uneasy feeling. Though 15 feet or so up in a tree, I felt vulnerable, anxious, and a panic set in for no explainable reason. There were no birds or animals for hours, which is extremely odd. I felt a primal, instinctual fear like I was being watched. At first I thought the lack of animals is due to the nasty smell which I thought was probably a carcass from something a predator had got. After I smelled it, after I smelled it was when the fear set in. Though again, I don't know why, I've come across these things plenty of times in the woods. It was right at dusk and I couldn't take any more of this feeling. I had to get out of that tree and decided to leave before dark. As I got to the ground, I drew my 357, which I never do, and started heading back to the house. The mile or so walk was spent walking backwards periodically as I felt I was being watched and or followed. I never saw anything, but the feeling left me shaken to the core. I truly believe that there was a Sasquatch nearby. I've hunted in some of the most remote places, spent countless hours in the woods, and never experienced anything like that. For the people who say, well, if those beings are out there, why have more people seen them? Well, I can offer this logic. Mountain lions, which are, regulated, which are a regulated species, are abundant in Montana, and I've spent hours and hours in the woods there over the past 15 years and never seen one. If this is truly an intelligent creature, ape, alien, whatever it is, I believe it knows how to avoid being seen. I've had a mixed, 
I've had mixed reactions sharing the story. Some believe me as they know I don't make shit up about hunting and fishing. Some say I was just being paranoid. I know what I felt, smelled, and witnessed. I know in 30 years there was the only time that I felt that way. It certainly won't keep me from my passion for the hunting or love of the outdoors, but it makes all the stories people share about these creatures believable. I believe all the stories you share from everyone. To get up the gusto to tell what you've seen, felt, and or heard, it had to have rocked you to your soul. Why would anyone make it up? I believe all of us, the people who are regularly and consistently in the woods, more than any scientist or government official. Thanks, Steve Kelly. Wow. All right, Kelly, thank you so much for sending that email in to us. Okay, Kelly, thanks a lot for sending that email in. Appreciate the time it took for you to type that out. Obviously, uh, typing out these emails and going out of your way to find an email address and send it out is, is a bit of a pain in the ass these days for basically anybody, right? And uh, I appreciate every single person that goes out of the way to share with everybody through through me, through this channel. And uh, yeah, we don't have to tell you what, you what you witnessed. You know what you witnessed, and you know exactly what it was. And if you didn't, you wouldn't have sought out this channel or this email to share with all of us. You know exactly what that was, and so do I. And so do literally thousands of people here that just listen to your, your share. But well, it is what it is, right? There's more going on than we are led to believe. And... Uh, there's over 4 million views on this channel a month and climbing. People want the answers. People want to share and people are curious. They've had it up to the nuts with the bullshit. Right? Show me I'm wrong. But anyway, it's time to get going. Things to do. Places to go. Everybody be safe out there. 